Good evening. Um, welcome to my talk on my Surrey Butterfly Year 2022. My name is Richard Stevens, and I've been interested in butterflies since childhood, but it's become a passion since I retired. I'm a member of the BC Surrey Committee. I walk two transacts each week from April until the end of September. However, this year it was three transacts for most of the summer as I supported two colleagues who were unable to walk the transacts due to illness and hospitalisation. Not that I'm complaining, as both transacts are on chalk downland and a pleasure to walk. I also led eight field trips, including the New Members Day. More about those in, in a short while. The spring was very dry. especially in April, causing slow growth of wildflowers and butterfly food plants, with a shortage of nectar putting additional pressure onto spring butterflies. Around the 11th of April it turned warm and suddenly butterflies started to emerge. Many species emerged early and this continued all through the hot summer, with record temperatures and little rain. Hence the butterflies went for shade early in the day, and their adult lifespan was shortened due to heat, lack of moisture, nectar and water. The autumn has been wet and warm, which although it extended the season for hibernators and migrants, we can only hope that sufficient of our native butterflies have laid eggs and the larvae and pupae have found safe dry places to survive until next spring. It also caused the species that overwinter as adults to keep flying or to hibernate early and then wake up early using up valuable energy reserves before the winter. Now it's turned very cold, winds are from the north with snow which may kill a lot of plants by freezing the sap in the soft stems. My presentation will take you through my 2022 butterfly year in Surrey including some out of county trips and a few surprises and some consequences of the lockdowns if we have time. Field trips were possible again this year as the virus retreated and vaccines gave us our freedom back, plus some unwanted consequences of the lockdowns and the after effect of COVID for butterflies. The majority of the photographs are mine and I've given credits to others where I've used their pictures um, for which I'm grateful. The sightings are based on those reported to the Surrey Butterfly website or on field trips, transacts or in our garden. I hope you enjoy my talk. 44 species of butterfly can be seen every year in Surrey with another three or four rare migrants possibly in good years. More of these later. New Year's Day usually tempts people out for a walk and the weather was mild this year, so it was no surprise that a couple of butterflies were seen. A Red Admiral in Merstrom by Gordon Hay and a Brimstone in Tatsfield by Ruth and Jim Mules. One week later, on January 7th, another Brimstone in Blindley Heath spotted by Steve, Stephen Morris at the British Wildlife Centre, which is just a couple of miles south of where I live. January the 9th and a comma at Farnham, then another Red Admiral on the 13th in Cromehurst near Croydon, again spotted by Stephen Morris, plus a peacock at Tatsfield by Jim Mules. January 14th, the Red Admiral in South Croydon, with several more sightings of Red Admirals to the end of January. February the 1st, a peacock near Merstrom by Gordon Hay and a brimstone at Belmont Park. Storms during early February kept most people indoors until the 7th when I got out and spotted my first butterfly of the year, a Red Admiral at Lingfield Nature Reserve. Uh, this is John Madden's photograph which uh, he kindly sent me. During the rest of the month, several Red Admirals, peacocks were seen across the county on favourable days, although the remainder of February was mostly stormy and cold. So the next species posted on the Surrey BC website was a small tortoiseshell. 
on March the 3rd on Mitcham Common. My next butterfly was a green stone at Lingfield Nature Reserve on the 8th of March. Temperatures reached the low teens on the 10th with sightings of red admiral, brimstone, comma, and several small turtle shells reported across the county. And then on March the 15th, a speck of wood in Burgess Park by Simon Savile. March 18th, several small whites appeared, and on March 19th, a holly blue on Putney Heath. My first butterfly trip was to Headley on the 21st of March, where we found, sorry, it's another uh, holly blue. <clears throat> Next butterfly trip was to Headley on the 21st of March, where we found four brimstones, two peacocks and two commas in the warm sunshine. Then a short drive south of Dorking to the ponds near Capel, where we found another comma. Then further down the road to Newdigate Brickworks to look for orange tips, but all we found was another small, another comma and two peacocks. March 22nd, an orange tip in Goldsworth Park and a green vein white in Goldstone by Gordon Hay, who was becoming quite an avid butterfly spotter in the local area. And he spotted an orange tip in Goldstone the next day. Long days of sunshine followed, bringing more sightings of small whites, holly blues and orange tips to complement the more usual small tortoise shells, peacocks, commas and red admirals. My daughter moved house at the end of March and I discovered a new nature reserve just across the road from where she lives called Tanyard Meadows. It's a new reserve, only been uh, there since 2018 on Old Flood Meadow and its early days, but I was pleased to find a small tortoise shell flying outside her house on the 22nd of March. 24th of March, 10.35 in the morning and already 14 degrees, I spotted the first butterfly this year in the back garden, which was a peacock. March 26th, a green vein white in Godston. Then, just as the transect started at the beginning of April, it turned cold until the 10th, when a green hair streak and a spotted by David Miller on Denvis Hillside followed by a grizzled skipper and a dingy skipper the next day on the same site. Then a surprise, a grizzled skipper on Putney Heath, spotted by Jennifer Mason. Grizzled skippers are not normally seen this far from the chalk downs and certainly not in central London. In an average season, grizzled skippers normally emerge seven to 10 days before the dingy skippers. However, this year, both species were seen within a day of each other, possibly confused by warm March and then cold weather in early April. From the 11th, the sun came out, temperatures climbed and the sightings came in thick and fast. So that's a dingy skipper. I found an orange tip in the garden on the 14th. Into the, this uh, next photograph shows a female orange tip and an egg which was laid on lady's smock. An early Duke of Burgundy was spotted by Louise Kahn and Michael Malcolm early at Chapel Bank on the 15th. Then a bonanza in my garden on the 16th with a speck of wood Peacock, holly blue, and another orange tip. My transact at Oxley Downs on the 18th of April found the first small heath plus green hair streaks. And this year there were plenty to be found uh, on Oxley Downs. There's two in this photograph. Close up view. 
always tricky to get the green colouring right. Across the county at Molesey Reservoirs, Nick spotted a very early painted lady. The painted lady is usually the first migrant butterfly to arrive in the UK. They overwinter in North Africa and migrate north in spring towards Europe. Helped by strong southerly winds in some years, there can be many thousands of butterflies which have migrated from North Africa. Breeding on the way in Spain and France and their offspring continuing the migration north reaching the UK in May and June. They breed here, then their offspring continues their migration north, some reaching Iceland in good years. In the autumn, later broods migrate southwards back to North Africa via France and Spain. Was 2022 going to be another painted lady invasion? The next species seen was a small copper on the 21st at Quarry Hangers and a very early small blue at Chapel Bank on the 24th. Anyway, then two very early common blues at George Hill and Buckland Hills. This one's a female which emerges a few days later. April 25th, the first woodwhite at Chiddingfold Forest by Francis Kelly. The woodwhite is rare and in Surrey is only found in and around the Chiddingfold Forest and specifically in Oakham Wood and Sydney Wood near the Sussex border south of Dunsfold. There are two broods, one in May and another in July. In recent conservation over the last three years, has increased its range in the area. Despite this year the mowing of all the rides by contractors for Forestry Commission, this year there were still good numbers of adults in both broods. If you'd like to see this butterfly, there is a Surrey field trip in mid-May. April the 30th, and a very rare large tortoiseshell was photographed at Headley Warren by Gary Margetts. Two were photographed in Surrey last year and further individuals were seen this year in Sussex, including several at Net in July. It's also reported to be breeding at a secret location in Sussex. Large tortoiseshells used to be a common sight in the UK but disappeared in the 1950s probably due to Dutch elm disease. It also feeds on sallows, poplars, and reportedly on cherry plums. So lack of food plant is not the reason for its rarity. On April 30th, another small blue was photographed by Colin Kemp at Denby's hillside. Colin, who's a really keen butterfly spotter and out nearly every day, also found a very early Adonis blue. This is an Adonis blue, so slightly out of sync here, but uh, on the fifth, a brown Argus was spotted on Hawks Hill by Helen, Helen Middlemas. The season now was really in full swing, but then the sun disappeared for my burst guided butterfly walk the season. It was on the 10th, it was cool and overcast and with only two people joining and no butterflies. May the 14th and the first Glanville Fritillary was seen at Hutchinson's Bank by Miguel Santos. This is the main site for Glanvilles in Surrey, having established from an introduction a decade ago. Their main UK colony is on the south coast of the Isle of Wight with another site in Surrey at Recklesham to the west of the county. Historical records report it being found in Dulwich in the 1700s. 
when it was known as the Dulwich Artillery. It later became the Plantain Artillery before finally becoming the Glanville Artillery. Hutchinson's Bank is also home to 40 species of butterfly, apart from grizzled and dingy skippers and green hair streaks, and it's one of the best sites for small blues in Surrey. And you can find a rare bee orchid or two while looking for them. This one was photographed in May. This is a male small blue, freshly merged and covered in silver fairy dust. You might also find a female egg laying on kidney vetch. May 16th dawned cloudy and wet for my birthday butterfly trip. Undaunted, we went anyway, and as we arrived at Kithurst Meadow in Sussex, the sun came out. Duke of Burgundies, green hair streaks, small blues, brimstones, grizzled and dingy skippers were found. Then a short drive to Mill Hill, where it was near the coast and overcast, but in between the gaps in the clouds, we found Adonis, common blues, brown argus, small heath, and a very obliging wall brown. And I forgot an adder and a glowworm. Topped off by beer and cake, it was after all my birthday. When we arrived back home in Godston, there were two painted ladies in the garden. May 18th, and a large skipper was seen in Tatsfield by Ruth Fields and a marsh artillery. At Hutchinson's Bank on the 21st, followed by a very rare narrow bordered bee hawk moth the next day, photographed by Kate Pickering. May 22nd, and almost a month early, a dark green fertility was seen at Blanchford Down by Kathy Mead, and then the first of many meadow browns were seen at Hutchinson's Bank on the 24th by Martin Wills. May 28th and the first black hair streak of 2022 was found on Epsom Common by the ranger Gareth Tilly. More about this rare butterfly in a moment. June the 1st we went on a 300 mile trip to Fine Shade Woods in Northampton where checkered stickers had been reintroduced by Butterfly Conservation and Forestry England. In the last three years, after becoming extinct, extinct in England in the 1960s, and they were only found in Scotland until recently. Butterflies at Fineshade Woods are from stock obtained from Belgium, and this year parts of Fineshade Woods were open to visitors. After a lot of searching, we were rewarded by finding a very obliging individual which posed for half an hour. Returning to Surrey the next day on June the 2nd, there were two small tortoiseshells in the garden and a holly blue. And also on the 2nd of June, the first marble white was seen at Moseley Reservoirs and a small skipper at Chipstead. Friday the 3rd and Red Admiral Common Blue and the speckled wood in the garden. And then on June the 4th, the first silver studded blue seen on Fairmore Common by David Miller. And another black hair streak was found at Nonsuch Park by Phil Kirk. And then two more at Haunton Country Club during a new walk here on June the 7th. I missed the two at Horton Park as we'd already left for Epsom Common, which is only 10 minutes away. The weather was closing in fast. However, we were successful in finding three black hair streaks just before the rain arrived. It was only a short shower, so we drove to Fairmore Common where the rain had stopped 
to find silver studded blues. Thermal Common is a special site for silver studded blues, which can only be found flying on Heathland in the west of the county, where the food plants Ling and Bell Heather grow. Unfortunately, Fairmont Common has been damaged this year by a number of off-road motorcyclists using the common as a scrambles track. Silver Study Blues were also found on MOD land during a specially arranged trip by Bill Downey this year. June the 7th was notable for other early first sightings. A white letter hair streak seen on Tooting Common. White letter hair streak is a canopy species, and if you can find a suitable sized elm tree in your area, check it out in June and July, as most elm trees support the small population white hair letter hair streak. This is an egg laying female. This is on uh, on Box Hill. They also turn up in surprising places. This one was pho photographed uh, last year in July. However, the species eluded me this year. Also on the on the seventh, the first ringlet was spotted in Sydney Wood by Tom Parker. Sorry. And a white admiral on Esther Common, seen by the ranger Gareth Tilly. On the 9th of June, a late morning phone call from a colleague resulted in a last minute trip to East Greenwoods in Kent for the Heath Artillery. This is a Heath Artillery. Numbers were good, and we came across Tim Bates, who's writing a book on seeing all the UK butterflies in the same year, trying to photograph a mating pair of heath fertilities. Close examination of the photos later revealed he was trying to pair two females. On June the 10th, and the first sighting of many this year, a hummingbird hawk moth in Epsom. More photos later. June the 12th, the black hair streak, was, which has been absent in Surrey for many years until it was rediscovered on Epsom Common in 2020, during the first COVID lockdown by two Surrey BC members, taking their permitted exercise, who came across these rare insects. This year, they've spread to three other sites, the adjacent Ashley Common, Autumn Park, and also non such park, so they appear to be well established and spreading. I led one of this year's field trips to Epsom Common on the 12th of June, which was attended by over 60 butterfly enthusiasts, and not all at the same time, with many from Surrey, a group from Kent, and even a couple of people from Norfolk. Over a period of four hours, around 60 enthusiasts were all well rewarded with close up views of one of Surrey's latest butterflies. An incredibly early silver wash fertility was seen on the 12th on Axon Common by Sally Ewan and an Essex skipper of Molesey Reservoirs on the 15th. This is one perched in the garden on a rose leaf. On the 16th of June, we left early and drove to Daneway Banks in Gloucestershire near Sirencester for the large blue. Unfortunately, we were a few days early and only caught a fleeting glimpse of a mating pair of large blues, which were disturbed by someone getting too close with a mobile phone. It was still worth the trip, however. Another canopy species is the purple hair streak, first seen on June the 18th this year, and then 
Two days later, an incredible number of 214 were counted on the evening of the 20th of June during the first of a evening survey for Purple Hair Streets. Purple Hair Streets live in oak trees. They're more common than other hair streaks and can be found flying in and above the canopy in late June and July. This year, it was so hot that they were often seen taking moisture on the ground or from plant watered plants in the garden in the record temperatures. This is a female taking moisture from plants I've just watered. You can see the droplet and the and it's proboscis going down for it. A close up view. Twenty first of June I led the field trip to Newlands Corner for dark green fertility. There's a pair of dark green fertilities with a melanistic female um, on top taken of years ago. Afterwards, we called in to Bookham Common on the way home, the White Admirals, and hopefully a sight of an early Purple Emperor, which we didn't see. This is two more White Admirals photograph locally to me in the Hedgecourt Woods in East Grinstead. Then on June the 22nd, a very early sighting of a chalk hill blue on Denby's hillside by Bill Downey, who, does, as you know, does a lot of conservation work and also walks the transect to, to Denby's hillside. There's a pair of chalk hill blues. The first Purple Emperor in Surrey was spotted on the 17th by Colin Kemp, name again, at Bookham Common. Numbers were down on Bookham Common this year as lots of the tall oaks and master trees have been felled, strangely during the fight season for White Admirals and Purple Emperors. They were just starting to recover from the crash in 2020 and 2021 caused by droughts those summers which caused the sallows to wilt and then in next year 2021 high winds and storms throughout the flight period blew the adults out of the tops of the trees hopefully they will have survived the drought this year and 2023 will see a recovery but the early reports for larva searches in the autumn are very poor this year i started looking for purple emperors early and on June 23rd, we went to Net Wildlands, south of Horsham. The Purple Emperor is one of our most spectacular butterflies. Early in the season, the meals feast on minerals on the ground and other noxious substances. Afterwards, they clean their proboscis on leaves. Here's one on Hawthorne. This particular in individual then flew onto a hazel tree where it continued to clean its proboscis. And then the male flew onto another leaf and perched low down, giving me a perfect shot of purple emperor with purple on both wings. I've been trying for this photograph for about eight years and it's my favorite photograph of the year. I made a total of five trips to the net this year including leading the Surrey field trip on the 1st of July, by which time the Purple Emperors had stopped coming down to the ground and were only seen in and around the tops of trees. However, we did see a few on the trip. A bonus this year at NEP in July were several sightings of large tortoiseshells.
June 26th, the groaning found on Brentmore Common by Philip Draper. Grayling is quite rare, normally flying in June, July and August. Grayling butterfly has amazing camouflage and can be found on the Surrey Heaths from Chobham Common to Camberley. They like hot dry areas, nectaring on bell heather and ling. The larvae feed on various grasses and there's a Surrey trip to Dorney Heath in uh, normally July or August. There's one nectaring on bell heather. One might be leading somebody or correct me if I'm wrong. In July, as the bramble flowers open, the gatekeepers appear. This year, the bramble flowers were early, and so were the first gatekeepers. It was seen on the 28th of June by Sheila Hart at Bookham Common. The males come out first, seeking out territory in a sunny spot, followed by the larger female a few days later. Twenty ninth and thirtieth of June, I found hummingbird hawk moths in the garden, and managed a few pictures when they made frequent visits during the summer. Once they found a nectar source, they will return around the same time the following day. They like Verbena boreensis, and you can see the pollen on this one's proboscis. Um, Still with pollen on it. July the 1st, and another very early butterfly, a male brown hair streak in a Beddington garden by Robert Orton. Fourteenth of July, and it's the big butterfly count in the garden. Peacocks, large whites, silver wash fritillaries, meadow brown. Red Admiral, Gatekeeper, and Small Whites. This only leaves the Silver Spotted Skipper, which was first seen on July the 16th on the Headley Heath field trip by Andrew Kingston. This one we found on the field trip to Rygate and Collie Hills on the 28th of July, which I also led. Silver Spotted Skippers are spreading. I found one early one morning on August the 6th roosting on field scabious on Oxted Downs. Although these university students have in the past found eggs here, we've never found an adult until this year. This is the furthest east in Surrey the adults have been recorded, although they're found just over the border in Kent, and this is the Oxted Down skipper. Clouded yellow sightings were scarce this summer until August when several were reported on the North Downs from Denbys to Oxted. I photographed this pair at Headley on August the 15th, and you can see the amazing camouflage, how they blend in. Only one Halise was seen this year on Denbys hillside. But plenty were seen in Sussex, until Mick Rock found one at Hurst Meadows on the 2nd of September. There's a second brood of clouded yellows in October, and sightings were made this year of Kidley, Coulston, Beddington Downs, and Mercer's Farm. The last butterfly to emerge is the rare brown hair streak, which normally emerges from July until September. This year it emerged early. And on the 1st of July, a male was photographed in a Beddington garden in an apricot bush by Robert Borton. We spotted four males on the Rygate and Polly Hills field trip, which I also led on July 29th. Sightings were probably rare this year due to the heat, causing the butterflies to come out early and people to miss them. A new hotspot was discovered last year at Tolworth Court Farm, with 16 recorded on September the 21st last year, and more were seen this year on the 7th of August by Penny Smallshire.
other species and sightings. The hot dry summer meant that some butterflies like the wool brown prospered and spread and at least four were seen in Surrey this year. The first at Hutchinson's Bank on May the 22nd by Louise Kahn and another on the 13th of August by David Lee. One pristine female was seen here on Denby's hillside on the 31st of July, photographed by John McGloin. And then, even more amazingly, a late fur brood wall brown was seen on October the 11th at Newlands Corner by our new committee member, Simon Riley. Unfortunately, I don't believe he got a photograph. The wall has three broods a year in Sussex, so watch out for these butterflies next year. Favourable winds brought other migrants from the continent. Long-tailed blues, a male seen here. Rip, not very often found this year in Surrey. A female was photographed on Isha Common, photograph here by Angela Bond. And then a very late sighting on November the 14th of another female on Banstead Common by Trevor Collett. Lots, however, were seen in Sussex this year, especially in Worthing, Storrington and Brighton. Despite planting lots of everlasting sweet pea in the garden, I did not see any this year. This is everlasting sweet pea. A rare Campbellwell beauty was seen on September the 11th on Epsom Common by Jerry Hooker. Previously, the last one seen in Surrey was on it's seen in Ash on March the 25th, 2020. The Campbellwell emerges in late summer and then hibernates through the winter, waking in March to pair and lay eggs. This one possibly flew in from the continent. And then a swallowtail was seen on the 6th of August on Denby's hillside by Nick Sherman. Over in Kent at Walmer, a colony of Queen of Spain fertilities were found in August and they kept the interest going from until early October, where up to six were seen. However, none made it into Surrey. Due to the warm autumn, butterflies. Sorry, it's another photograph of the Queen of Spain. And a wall brown. Due to the warm autumn, butterflies kept flying until the end of November, with clouded yellows and even the hummingbird hawk moth being seen at the end of October. Then into November, Red Admirals. I took my last photograph seen here on the 4th of November. However, I did see another one on the 25th, but other butterflies were seen late. A comma at Bookham, Red Admirals in Richmond Park and Old Coulston, and amazingly a speck of wood at Eddington Farmlands on the 25th, and a brimstone at Chilworth. And finally, Red Admirals on the 28th at South Wimbledon, and again on the 30th of November at Chilworth and Egham. Unless you know different. A rare butterfly can pop up anywhere, be it a rare migrant or as frequently claimed unauthorized release. Perhaps you can discover a rare species or a new site. Thank you for listening. And now we'll take questions.